Hello and welcome to another video. This video will show you how to use integration by parts to solve integration problems. However, we'll be using a table and not just writing everything out like we did in other videos. So I want to show you this method. It is called the DI method. This, the D stands for differentiate and the I stands for integrate. So you're just going to pick two things which we know are supposed to be our U and the V. So you're going to transform whatever question you have. One of uh, the components will be U and the other will be the V. And what you do to U is differentiate. So you're going to put the U here and you keep differentiating until you find the answer. And I'm going to show you how to find the answer. And in this case, you put your dv here, you're going to integrate, you keep integrating until you find the answer. So, one quick rule I want to give you, or a suggestion, okay, is that every time you have a function that contains a polynomial like this, you want to make sure that you make that polynomial your u, because it's easy to differentiate, and as you keep differentiating a polynomial, it keeps getting smaller until you get zero, remember. So, that brings your work to an end, because by the time you get zero, well, there's nothing else you're going to do. Okay, so every time you have a polynomial, you should always make it your U, except in this case. So if you have a combination of a polynomial and a natural log function, well, because you cannot integrate natural log, you have to differentiate the natural log, and you now start integrating the, um, the polynomial. And somehow it always works out. Okay, and I'm going to show you how that works out. So let's get into the video, starting with the first example. So I'm going to write this here, x cubed, which is my u, and I'm going to take cosine x as my dv. Okay? So I'm going to just going to put it here, and now I'm going to leave out the dx for now so we can have enough space for whatever we're writing. So at this point, remember that the, the formula says it's going to be uv, so we already have our u here. Uh, but this is dv, so let's get our v. So our v is going to be, if we integrate cosine x, we're going to get sine x. Okay, so the first line of our answer is supposed to be, I'm going to write it here, okay, will be equal to uv, um, but we're supposed to have the integral of v du. What is v? This is our v, and this is, where is du? We don't have du, so let me quickly get the u. So you see, I'm going to differentiate this side, and I'm going to get 3x squared. Okay, so the next line should be uv multiplied by the integral of v du. Do we know how to integrate this? Well, we still have to use integration by parts again. So for this point, if we start from here again, this is going to end up becoming our dv, and this is going to be our u. So we still need to differentiate this, so we're going to get 6x. And if we integrate this, we're going to get negative cosine x. Okay, um, so this is going to be uv, and this is going to be our new uv again. So everything goes in this direction, like this. This also connects like this. Well, why did I put this negative sign here? Remember that the formula says it's going to be minus. Okay, so, and then this is supposed to be another minus, but the minus times that other minus will change it into a plus. So, that's why you have this alternating signs, and you must recognize them. So, once you make your table, start by putting the signs plus, minus, plus, minus, like that. On, just keep going until your work comes to an end, and we're going to see how the work comes to an end. Okay, so, you've got 6x and minus 6x. Well, do we know how to integrate 6x times negative cosine x, well, we still have to do integration by parts. So why don't we just do it again, and then we integrate this again, we get negative sine x. And if we integrate 6x, what do we get? We get 6. Now, do we know how to integrate 6, negative 6 sine x? Yeah, we definitely do. Oh, it's going to be positive. Yeah, we do. But why don't we just do it here? We can actually do integration by parts on this table again for this one, even though we know what the answer is going to be. So if you integrate sine x, you get cosine, I mean, negative sine x is going to give you cosine x. And if you integrate this, you get zero. Now, if we multiply this, what do we get zero? Do you know how to integrate zero? Yes. So we're done. You don't need to do any integration because it's zero. So all your answers are in this diagonal direction like that. 
recognizing these signs. So let's go write the answer here. So I'm going to tell you that the answer to this problem will be x cubed sine x and then followed by negative 3x squared times negative, so it's going to be positive, so it's going to be plus 3x squared cosine x followed by negative, because this plus times negative will be minus 6x sine x, minus 6x sine x, and finally it's going to be negative 6 times positive, that's negative 6 cosine x, minus 6 cosine x. There's one more thing to add to it, which is the integral of 0 times cosine x, so if we added it, it would be like this, well, we know that the integral of 0 is 0, so we don't need to write that. Okay, so we write our plus c, and that's our answer for the first one from the table. You see, you don't have to write many things, you just need to fill the table with the correct derivative or the correct integral, and you just write out your answer. That's beautiful. Let's take the second one. In this case, what should you take as u and what should you take as v? Whenever you do not have a polynomial, you want to choose wisely because you have to decide if it's going to be e to the x that you will make your u or sine x you're going to make your u. How do you choose? Well, in this case, it does not matter because sine x will keep alternating whether you're integrating or differentiating. It's going to go from sine to cosine to sine, whether you differentiate or integrate. The only thing that is different is the sign you're going to have. Now for e to the x, it does not change whether you integrate or differentiate, you keep getting e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. So you see, it doesn't matter which one you choose, they behave in a similar way whether you integrate or differentiate and that's why we just have to do what we want. But I, because I know how to, uh, sometimes this confuses me when I integrate, so I just go differentiating because I know that the de derivative of sine x is cosine x and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So I'm just going to make this my sine x, make u here, and e, this is going to be e to the x. So what do I do? I just keep integrating until I see something that looks like this again. Once I see it, then I stop. So because you know it doesn't go to zero like you had in this case where this went to zero, you just keep looking at the product horizontally and say, oh, this looks like the problem itself, and then you stop. Okay, so now this is our u. If we integrate, differentiate sine x, we get cosine x. If we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x. Well, this does not look like this, so we keep going. If I differentiate cosine x, I get negative sine x. If I integrate this, I get e to the x. Well, this line looks like this line. Okay, so even if you have numbers or signs different, it doesn't matter as long as the main functions are, are the same. You just stop there. So now I have stopped, and what is my answer? You do the diagonal also, recognizing the sign. It's going to start with e to the x sine x. That's the first answer. So this is going to be e to the x sine x. And then you go to the next one. It's going to be, this is negative cosine x e to the x. That's minus e to the x cosine x. And then you go to the third line. Well, the third line will still be, you can't keep going because you already found something that looks like the first line. So you stop here and you multiply this line. So this is negative e to the x sine x. So it will be minus the integral. Remember when you go horizontally, you must integrate, okay? The integral of e to the x sine x. Or maybe I should move this up here so that we can solve the equation. So you have this to be e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Okay, so based on what we've got, I need to get rid of this. So based on what we've got, you have, you can move this and add it to this and then you're gonna have two of it, okay? So two of these will be just this part and then you can divide both sides by 2 which will isolate this so we can say that our final answer will be equal to one half of if you factor this e to the x sine x minus cosine x that's the answer to the second one 
just from the table. Okay, so in the case of the third example, you have a polynomial and natural log function. Because you cannot integrate natural log function, you must choose it as what to differentiate. And then you keep integrating this. But the beautiful thing about natural log functions is that as soon as you differentiate, the natural log disappears and then you start having rational expressions. Okay, remember that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x and then the ln thing goes away and then you can just move on. Okay, so that's the beauty of this and that somehow it will start balancing out what is on the left hand side or it might just get rid of it. That's the beauty of um, doing this. So let's see what it's going to look like on the table. So right now on the table, natural log of x must be differentiated. So we put it here, ln of x, and then we put this here, x squared. Well, let's differentiate this. This is going to be 1 over x. Let's integrate this. It's going to be 1 third x cubed. Um, what should we do? Should we keep going? No, just stop. Why should we stop? Because the product of these two will give you a polynomial and you can integrate any polynomial. So you stop. That's all the work we've got to do. So we can go here and say um, that this is going to be, remember, this is u dv, has to be this two, um, has to be uv rather, so ln of x. So we can write this out as 1 over 3x cubed, 1 over 3x cubed ln x. That's the first thing you get. Then the second one will be the integral along this line, but there's a negative. So minus, if you multiply 1 over x by 1 third x cubed, you get 1 third x squared. So it will be minus the integral of 1 over 3 x squared dx. So this is the only thing we don't know. Well, What's the integral of this? This would be 1 third x cubed. If you multiply it by this, you're going to get 1 ninth x cubed plus c. And that's it. So our answer is 1 over 3 x cubed ln x minus 1 over 9 x cubed plus c. Well, you can actually factor this out. And what would it be? Let's factor. So we're going to have... Um, Again, I have to factor that out. x cubed, oh, let's do it. So it's going to be 1 over 9, 1 over 9 x cubed into 3 ln x minus 1, actually, plus c. Oh, that's what we get as our final answer. How do I box that? Well, I just, it's not a box because there's no space. But I'm just, <laughs> okay, so I think that's what we're going to get as our final answer. And that's it. If you like this method, use it. If your instructor allows you to use it. Otherwise, still, don't stop learning. Because <laughs> those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.